National League North review for March. Let's get into it. Now, this is how the table looked going into March. Tamworth were top of the table and sit 10 points clear of Scunthorpe, who were in second. Charlie, Chester, Brackley, Alfreton and Boston make up the rest of the playoffs. But with Warrington in 12th, only four points off seventh, there's still plenty of teams in the running. At the bottom of the table, Bishop start for the 24th, 20 points from safety. Gloucester, 23rd, five points off safety. Darlington, 22nd, three points off safety. And Banbury in 21st, are in the relegation zone on goal difference. So let's start with Saturday the 2nd of March where we had a National League North attendance record set. Second place Scunthorpe but home to fourth place Chester was played in front of 7,511 fans. An incredible attendance for the sixth tier of English football with 1,100 Chester fans in the away end so credit to them as well. But onto the football it was Chester who took the lead in this game 29 minutes in courtesy of winger Ben Tollett on loan from Oldham. He showed flashes of brilliance at him early on in the season but was far too inconsistent however he's made an excellent start at Chester in his first three games. Then in the 59th minute Scunthorpe brought the game back level through Liam McAllendon but it only took Chester five minutes to retake the lead through George Glendon who's brought down inside the box but he pokes the ball into the back of the net whilst on the floor to put Chester 2-1 up. Then two minutes later, things were made even more difficult for Scunthorpe when goal scorer Liam McAllendon was sent off, but this ended up being a blessing in disguise, as after the red card, Scunthorpe were much improved. Once they went down to 10, rather than having Whitehall up front on his own, they went to two up top, they played more direct, they played with more energy, and in the 82nd minute, Jacob Butterfield scored a deserved equaliser for the game to finish 2-2. By Tamworth's lofty standards this season, they had a pretty lacklustre February, winning only one game and scoring only one goal all month. But thankfully, Tamworth's success this season has been down to having the best defence in the league, so they were able to pick up a couple of nil-nil draws throughout February. But against Blythe Spartans, it was a resounding return to form as they ended their goal drought in style. A header from Dan Creaney and two goals from Chris Ray, with his second being an excellent strike, put Tamworth 3-0 up inside the first 20 minutes. And those two worked so well together up front in this game which is something they've been missing out on throughout February. Blythe did get a goal back and put Tamworth under a bit of pressure towards the end but a 3-1 win sees them go 12 points clear at the top. On to the race for playoffs as 9th place Curzon were at home to 8th place Hereford. A win for either of these sides would put them up into the playoffs and this was a game where Hereford had a lot of chances but just couldn't score and it got towards the end of the game Curzon were hanging on for a point but in the 93rd minute player manager Craig Mann crosses the ball to the back post and Jimmy Spencer with a diving header wins the game for Curzon 1-0 a massive blow for Hereford who created more than enough chances to win the game but this win puts Curzon up into the playoffs now let's turn our attention to the relegation battle as it's all very tight there's only one point separating 18th place Rush Hall Olympic with 21st place Banbury in the relegation zone and to make things worse for these teams just above the drop 22nd place Darlington have been on a resurgence as of late winning three of their last four games and we would see if Darlington could continue this good run of form with a massive six pointer as they were home to 21st place Banbury. It was Darlington who had the better of the first half and in the 33rd minute they deservedly took the lead after some great work from Rivers down the left. He finds Andrew Nelson in the box whose header he saved but Matty Cornish was there to put in the rebound to put Darlow 1-0 up. Banbury offered absolutely nothing in the first half, but in the 46th minute, a complete fluke from Aidan Elliott Wheeler got Banbury back into the game at 1-1. Banbury did improve in the second half and made a bit more of a game of it, but the Darlington defence managed to restrict them to very few shots on goal, and in the 66th minute, Darlington got a bit of good fortune when Will Hatfield's penalty was saved, and Andrew Nelson's rebounded effort was going wide until the Banbury defender Simeon May turned the ball into his own net. Darlington wrapped the game up in the 93rd minute as said Cedric Main played through Cameron Salkeld, who finished well to give Darlow the 3-1 win. And with three wins on the spin and only one point from safety, things are looking a bit more promising for Darlington. On to another team who's improved massively, and that's 20th place Kings Lynn, who have only lost once in their last eight, which has seen them climb out of the relegation zone. And they continued that good run of form with a massive 3-1 win against South Shields. Now, at the start of January, Kings Lynn were looking for investment, otherwise the club wouldn't see out the season. And that investment came from a Singapore businessman who stepped in to save the club and that injection of money allowed them to bring in some new signings and they brought in six or seven players and it didn't
didn't really work at first as you throw a load of new players in mid-season and it all looked a bit disjointed. But now the signings have settled. Kingsland are looking like a much better side. They're mixing the play up a lot more now when they know when to play it short and they know when to play it long. And it's a massive 3-1 win which takes them up into 18th, three points above the relegation zone. So at the end of March the 2nd, Tamworth sit top 12 points ahead of Scunthorpe. The playoff positions stay the same apart from Boston who slipped down into 8th and are replaced by Curzon in 7th. At the bottom, Darlington's win puts them level on points with Banbury and that win for Kingsland puts a bit of distance between themselves and the relegation zone but it's still very tight with Southport and Rush Hall Olympic both just above the drop zone. Now on to Tuesday the 5th of March where we had a couple of games played and we'll start at Darlington whose incredible turnaround in form continues. A 4-0 win against 2nd in the table, Scunthorpe makes it 5 wins in 6 and I think the turning point has been since manager Steve Watson came in. He's made 4 signings and all 4 of them have made a difference. Goalkeeper Matty Young on loan from Sunderland. He's only 17 but he commands his area like an experienced pro and it's clear that he's way too good for this league. They got defender Scott Barrow on loan from York who's helped shore up the defence with his leadership and quality. They signed midfielder Matty Cornish who was at Mask United before they resigned from the Northern Premier League and he took a few games to get up to speed but now he's hit form. His work rate is incredible and he's chipping in with goals as well. Then finally striker Cedric Main who they signed from York and his strength and ability to hold the ball up and link up the play has been a huge asset for them and these four signings have added something to the squad in all areas of the pitch and things are looking a lot better for Darlington. As for Scunthorpe they've been really quite poor for the last few weeks and the fans didn't hold back at the end of the game. Now on to Banbury who lost against another relegation rival. This time it was 20th place Rush Hall Olympic beating them 2-1. Uh, back in January Banbury parted ways with manager Mark Jones and first team coach Craig McKay took over the next two games and won both of them beating Scarborough and Darlington and those were two real good battling performances as well where they played on the front foot and attacked but they didn't give the job to McKay. They instead gave it to Kevin Wilson who's an experienced manager at non-league level but hasn't managed since 2016 and eight years is a long time out of football and since taking over it's been one draw and five defeats they brought in a couple of lone players like luca woodhouse lewis darlington and joshua johnson to freshen things up but none of them have made a difference and it's looking a long way back for banbury now with both Darlington and Rushall winning, if 19th place Southport failed to win against Warrington, they would slip into the relegation zone. But it was an excellent start for Southport, who went 1-0 up 12 minutes in, thanks to a composed finish from Richie Bennett. In the first half, Southport only had two chances, but that's all they needed, as in the 39th minute, Marcus Carver goes through on goal and chips the ball over the keeper to give them a two-goal lead. Southport have been conceding far too many goals the last three months, but with centre-back Ben Hockenhull signed on loan from Tranmere in pressing, and Southport star centre-back Adam Anson returning from injury. The defence is looking far more solid. It's three clean sheets in four games and this massive 3-0 win puts them two points above the relegation zone. After those midweek games, Scunthorpe's defeat means they stay 12 points behind Tamworth and they are starting to look over their shoulder now with Charlie only one point behind in third. A win for Hereford puts them up into the playoffs into sixth. At the bottom, Darlington's win means they leapfrog Banbury into 21st and are only inside the relegation zone on goal difference. Vital wins for both Rush Hall and Southport put them up to 19th and 18th, but there's still a lot of work to do. Now on to Saturday the 9th of March and we'll start with Scarborough who have been on a dreadful run of form as of late. No wins in 7 games have seen them slip from 3rd in the table all the way down to 11th and it was another defeat as they were beaten 1-0 by Tamworth. A bit later on in the episode I'll talk about what's going wrong at Scarborough and why they're going through this slump but this win takes Tamworth a step closer to the title. 12 points clear of Scunthorpe who themselves got back to winning ways beating bottom of the table Bishop Stortford 5-0. And it was a good job that Scunthorpe Scunthorpe did win as Charlie in third place are breathing down the necks of Scunthorpe. Only one point separates them and Charlie got a 1-0 win away at sixth place Hereford. A long throwing gets flicked on by Mark Ellis and Jack Hazelhurst volleys the ball past Curtis Pond to give Charlie the only goal of the game and it's another defeat against a playoff rival for Hereford who drop out of the playoffs into ninth. Now on to South Shields who despite being in 12th are only four points off a playoff position so a win against fifth place Brackley would keep them in the race but in the 80th minute a 
moment of magic from Morgan Roberts gives Brackley the 1-0 win. Shields kept the ball but struggled to create chances against a very well-drilled Brackley side and this defeat sees them move down into 13th, 6 points off the playoff spots. Now unfortunately there's no highlights of this game posted but a massive 7-3 victory for Boston moves them up into a playoff position and keeps Gloucester in 23rd. Now let's turn our attention to the relegation battlers for the third game in a row, 22nd place Banbury were up against a relegation rival and sadly for Banbury they have lost all three of these vital games a 1-0 defeat at home to Southport and Banbury were slightly better than what they have been and they did give it a go in that second half but Southport never looked in any real danger it's three clean sheets in a row for Southport who go five points above the drop zone and finally on to another relegation six pointer as 20th place Kingsland were up against 17th place Blythe Spartans who were looking comfortable in January but no winning eight has seen them get dragged into this tight relegation battle and in the 68th minute Kingsland were awarded a penalty which Johnny Magretz fires in off the underside of the bar to put the Linux 1-0 up. It's fair to say that Blythe were the better team in this game but they just could not find that goal and this is becoming all too common for Blythe since they made the playoffs in 2018 every season since they flirted with relegation and this 1-0 defeat sees they've slipped down into 18th three points above the relegation zone. So after the 9th of March Tamworth sit top of the table 12 points above Scunthorpe in second with Charlie right behind them in third. Brackley, Chester, Alfreton and Boston sit in the playoffs but it's so tight with a couple of teams just outside within striking distance of the top seven. At the bottom, defeat for Darlington keeps them in 21st but they sit only one point from safety with Rush all in 20th. Kings, Lynn, Blythe, Southport and Farsley all remain in the relegation battle. Now on to Tuesday the 12th of March and we'll start with a race for playoffs as 9th place Hereford were up against 6th place Alfreton and things started very well for Hereford as 9 minutes in they took the lead through Jason Cowley and it was Looking like it could have been a long night for Alfreton, with Hereford creating multiple chances in the first 10 minutes. But Alfreton completely turned the game on its head, helped by some shocking defending from Hereford, with two of the goals coming from giving the ball away at the back. But 35 minutes in, after being one down, Alfreton were 3 1 up, leaving Hereford with a lot of work to do. In the second half, Hereford improved and Alfreton seemed to just stop attacking, opting to try and hold on to their lead, but in the 63rd minute, some excellent work from Alex Babos brought the game to 3-2. Hereford pushed for the equaliser and in the 95th minute, the ball comes into the box which falls at the feet of goalkeeper Curtis Pond. He lays it off to Skinner who fires it home to make the game 3-3. It's not often you see a keeper getting an assist that high up the pitch, but deserved the equaliser for Hereford who are much the better team in the second half and this result keeps Hereford in ninth and Alfreton in sixth. Now on to another team in the hunt for the playoffs and that's Warrington who in their first ever season at the National League North level are only four points off a playoff spot and they win against Farsley would keep them in the race and in the 42nd minute a brilliant double save from the Farsley goalkeeper saw a mad scramble but Connor Woods was there to poke it in to put Warrington 1-0 up. Then just three minutes later Connor Woods was back on the score sheet again he beats his man then fires it into the back of the net for his 11th goal of the season. A quality finish from a quality player and a comfortable 2-0 win that puts them up into 10th just three points off a playoff spot so with Scunthorpe's game against Spenny Moore called off a win for Charlie would move them up into second if they could beat 13th place South Shields but Charlie manager Andy Priest made quite a gamble with his starting 11 opting to rest some key players making five changes from the side who beat Hereford last time out and 21 minutes in, Aaron Martin put South Shields 1-0 up, but Charlie got themselves level on the 47th minute through Carlton Ube Zuonu. From then on, there wasn't a huge amount of chances and the game seemed to be heading for a draw, but in the 94th minute, Paul Blackett is played in behind. He's taken out by the keeper and the ball falls to Dylan Stevenson to give South Shields a 2-1 win. Charlie missed the opportunity to go into second and it's fair enough having to rest players and rotate the squad, but when you drop all three of your midfielders who've been playing so well, it's going to affect the team, but this win puts South Shields up into 11th. It was a massive game down at the bottom of the table as 21st place Darlington were up against 18th place Blythe Spartans and whilst Darlington have been resurgent in their form, Blythe have gone 9 games without a win and things weren't looking good for them when Matty Cornish scored an unreal goal 12 minutes in to put Darlington 1-0 up. 
Dalo were always on top and it was only a matter of time before they got the second. In the 65th minute, a sliding tackle from Griffiths saw the ball fall to Cam Salkeld who finished into the bottom right-hand corner. But Blythe didn't give up and they put Darlington under a lot of pressure in the final 10 minutes and a goal in the 89th minute made things interesting but Dalo held on for the 2-1 win. And what a turnaround in their season. On the 10th of February, they were sat 23rd, 9 points from safety and couldn't buy a win but since then, 6 wins in 8 games have seen them climb out of the relegation zone and what a job manager Steve Watson has done so far. Now on to Saturday, March the 16th, and we're going to start third place Chorley, who after defeat midweek responded brilliantly with a 3 0 win against 13th place Scarborough, who've now gone eight games without scoring a goal. Now, this dreadful goalless run coincided with winger Finley Barnes being recalled to his parent club, York. He was such a pivotal part of this Scarborough attack with his technical ability and his direct dribbling is something that Scarborough are really missing at the moment. To replace Barnes, they signed winger Don McHale, who was excellent for Gloucester last season, but he's been really poor for Scarborough and hasn't settled. Another factor is that striker Aidan Rutledge was on fire but his goals have dried up. Now he is someone who linked up so well with Barnes so I think Barnes leaving has impacted his game. Top scorer Harry Green whose pace frightens defenders has been carrying an injury and isn't fully fit so he's only been played intermittently the past couple of weeks but Scarborough can be thankful that their excellent first half of the season means they've got enough points to not get relegated. Now on to 9th place Hereford whose tough run of fixtures continues as they were up against 4th place Brackley and it was Brackley who took the lead 12 minutes in when Morgan Roberts fired the ball past Curtis Pond to put Brackley 1-0 up. After a very poor first half from Hereford they had more of the ball after the break without really threatening but that's kind of what Brackley does against the bigger teams. They get a lead, they sit back, they defend it and they are so well organised and that's how they control games. Brackley wrapped the game up in the 83rd minute for a Zach Lilly header. It's yet another defence feet for Hereford against a playoff rival but they're still only three points off a playoff spot so all is not lost. Now on to seventh place Curzon who currently sit in the last playoff spot but they are up against a Spenny Moore team who are making a late push for the playoffs themselves. Seven wins in the last nine games have seen them go from being just above the relegation zone up into the top half of the table and it was Spenny Moore who took the lead four minutes in through Finley Shrimpton then 34 minutes in Spenny Moore doubled the lead a beautiful pass from Rob Ranshaw found McEwen who took a touch and it into the bottom right hand corner. Whilst Curzon had all the possession, Spenny Moore looked so good on the break. In the 52nd minute, a long ball up from the keeper wasn't dealt with by the Curzon defence, and the ball fell to Rob Ramshaw, who finished off to make the game 3 0. That's eight wins in 10 for Spenny Moore, who are top of the form table, and to make things even better for the Moors, the top scorer for the last seven seasons, Glenn Taylor, came off the bench to make his return after a lengthy knee injury, and this win puts them just four points off a playoff spot. So with Curzon's defeat, a win for 8th place Boston against Fars who would put them into a playoff position and it was a bit of a slow start to the game but once Kelsey Mooney opened the scoring for Boston in the 30th minute it was all Boston from there. Striker Kelsey Mooney scored 4 goals in their last game away at Gloucester and in this game he nets a hat trick, 7 goals in 2 games for Mooney and it was 3 really well taken goals as well which puts him on 15 for the season and with striker Jimmy Knowles up top also on 15 I think if Boston do make the playoffs that strike force will worry any team but this win puts Boston into the top seven and they seem to be hitting form just at the right time. Now onto a massive game at the bottom, only two points separate 21st place Rush Hall Olympic and 19th place Kings Lynn. So this was a must win for both sides in their bid for survival. And it was Rush Hall who took the lead four minutes in. The ball came out to Alex Fletcher who drilled his strike into the bottom corner to put Rush Hall 1-0 up. But Kingsland have been in excellent form recently, going seven games unbeaten. And since the takeover and influx of new signings, it looks like Kingsland are too good to go down. And one of those signings who's been superb is striker Johnny Margrets, whose goals in the 45th and the 78th minute turned this game around for Kingsland. He scored 28 goals in 28 games for Matlock this season before Kingsland signed him in January. And he stepped up brilliantly to the National League North level. That's now eight games unbeaten for Kingsland, who sit five points above the drop zone. Now we'll finish off with Bishop Stortford, cut adrift at the bottom of the table, 29 points from safety, 14 consecutive losses in the league and relegation was confirmed with a 3-0 defeat 
defeat away at six by Alfreton. Now, a lot was made at the start of the season about the decision to put Bishop Stortford in the National League North, and there's no doubt that the increased travel did make it harder to attract players. They lost some key players from last season who opted to sign with sides in southern base leagues instead, and they came into the season with a squad looking very thin. The one highlight from this season to forget was their FA Trophy win back in January, where despite not being able to buy a win in the league, they beat National League Aldershot 6 1, which was an unbelievable result. But from now till the end of the season, the manager said to expect players to be released, and you'll see more academy players coming into the side in order to prepare for next season. As for the table, Tamworth sit 15 points clear at the top. Alfredson's win moves them up into 5th and Boston's victory means they jump from 8th into 7th to replace Curzon in the playoff positions. At the bottom, there's finally some breathing space between the relegation zone and the teams above safety. It's been so tight for so long, but wins for Darlington, Blythe and Kingsland means that Rush Hall Olympic are now 5 points from safety. Gloucester did get a surprise win away at Warrington, but it's looking all too late for them now. Now on to Tuesday the 19th of March, where we only had two games played and we'll start at Kingsland where a win for them against an already relegated Bishop Stortford would put them 8 points clear of the relegation zone and they took the lead 18 minutes in through Josh Margrets who's in excellent form scoring 6 goals in his last 4 games but to be fair to Bishop Stortford despite already being relegated they didn't roll over and a well worked move saw Lord and Acklebaya in space on the right but he fired his shot onto the post but Kingsland wrapped the game up when Ben Stevens had the time in the box to take the ball in his chest and volley into the net to give Kingsland the 2-0 win and that makes it nine games unbeaten for the Linnets as they go a step closer to securing safety. Blythe Spartans had been on a dreadful run of form but a win against Southport last time out eased the pressure on them somewhat and they followed up that win with a massive 3-2 victory against Buxton to put them eight points above safety. Two games ago it was hard to see where the next win was coming from but a change of system from manager John Shaw seems to have done the trick. A switch from a back five to a back four with JJ Hooper lead in the line, McGowan in behind as the 10, with Luke James on the left and Xander Sabiza on the right, they've looked so much more incisive going forward, putting four past Southport last time out and now three past Buxton. And as for Buxton, it was announced that manager Craig Elliott will be stepping down at the end of the season. He came in halfway through last season with Buxton sat three points above the relegation zone and he took them on a great run of form to end up finishing only one point outside the playoffs. But this season has been a slight disappointment. It looks like they're going to finish mid-table when they were hoping to be pushing for the playoffs, but they've just been way too inconsistent. So Buxton will be looking for a new manager for next season, but a 3-2 win for Blythe put them eight points above safety. Now on to Saturday the 20th, 3rd of March and let's start with top of the table Tamworth who were looking to go a step closer to the title with a win against Kings Lynn and Tamworth did take the lead 46 minutes in when Kyle Finn strike took a deflection past the keeper to put Tamworth 1-0 up. This game was picked for TV and was live on TNT Sports, but it was not a particularly entertaining game, but Kingsling got the equaliser late on through a deflected Owen Devonport strike, and Tamworth haven't been at the best the last few weeks, but the important thing is that they aren't losing games, and a 1-1 draw against the Kingsling side who are 10 games unbeaten is not a bad result. Now on to second place Scunthorpe, who after the 4-0 defeat away at Darlington early on in the month, they've responded very well since then, and a 2-0 win away at Warrington has made it three wins in a row, and whilst the title is a long shot as they sit 11 points behind Tamworth, they need to ensure that they at least finish second. And they got a big lift in this game with the return of winger Callum Roberts, who's been injured since January, but he came off the bench for the last 20 minutes and was a class above. It was his good work down the right to set up the second goal, and keeping him fit for this final running is going to be crucial. As for Warrington, at the start of the month, they were well in the race for playoffs, but three defeats in their last four means they now sit 12, six points off seven. Now on to a big game between two playoff rivals with 3rd place Chorley up against 7th place Boston and Boston can't stop scoring goals at the moment. A statement 3-0 win and they took Chorley apart in the first half with an excellent attacking display. They moved the ball around so well and exploited the spaces in the Chorley defence. A hat-trick for Jimmy Knowles means that in three games we've seen four hat-tricks from the two Boston strikers, two for Kelsey Mooney and two for Jimmy Knowles and this win moves Boston up into 5th. Chorley were better in the second half and did miss a penalty but Boston dealt with what Charlie had to offer quite comfortably and this defeat sees them slip into fourth. 
And while some teams like Boston are hitting form at the right time, sixth place Chester are going through a terrible spell and a 1-0 defeat to South Shields has seen them go seven games without a win. They've got the second best defence in the league, but the lack of goals really is costing them. They lost top scorer Kurt Willoughby to Oldham over the summer and nobody has really stepped up to replace those goals that they've lost and this defeat sees them fall out of the playoffs into eighth. After a poor run, Hereford got back to winning ways with a 4-1 win against Farsley to put themselves only two points outside the playoffs and there's no highlights posted of this game so we'll move on. Moving on to the relegation battle it was a huge game at the bottom as 21st place Rushall were up against 20th place Darlington. Five points separated the two sides but we'll join this game in the 38th minute where Ronan Mayer scored an excellent goal cutting inside his right foot to put Rushall 2-1 up. But in the 44th minute, Darlington gets a corner, which finds its way to Platt, whose shot is blocked, but Cedric Main was there to head it in for his second of the game to bring it to 2-2. But the first half wasn't done there. Darlington's number one goalkeeper, Matty Young, who's been so good, was called up for the England under-18s. So in came Tommy Taylor back into the side and he really should have saved Owen Farmer's strike, which put Rushall back ahead to make it 3-2. And that is how the game finished. Darlington had been on a brilliant run and a win would have put them eight points clear. But now they sit just two points above safety. Rushall battled so well and deserved their win in the end and they've put the pressure right back onto Darlington. Now at the end of March the 23rd, Tamworth sit 11 points clear of Scunthorpe, Chester fall out of the playoffs and are replaced by Curzon who beat Banbury, but it's also tight with 11th place Spennymore only 3 points off 7th. At the bottom, Darlington had some breathing space for only a week, the gap is now just 2 points with Rushall's win also bringing Farsley Celtic dangerously close to the relegation zone. Now on to Tuesday the 26th of March where we had a couple of games played and we'll start with Spennymore who've been on a remarkable run of form. On the 30th of January, they sat only three points above the relegation zone, but eight wins in their last nine have seen them breathing down the neck of the playoffs. And they were at home to a Scunthorpe side who've looked a lot better in recent weeks. And 47 minutes in, Scunny thought they'd gone one up when Whitehall's effort hits the crossbar, loops into the air, the keeper flaps and hits it into his own net, but the referee disallows it, thinking that Butterfield has pushed the keeper. But from the replay, you can clearly see that the keeper doesn't get touched. It's an awful decision, and up until the disallow, our goal Scunthorpe had been the better team and were playing some good football but 10 minutes later Ramshaw played a ball in behind the defence Ogle plays it back to Fitzsimmons who takes an awful touch and McEwen puts the ball into the back of the net to put Moores 1-0 up and Scunthorpe have only come from behind to win once this season and that was on the opening day so when things go wrong they do struggle to recover. They continued pushing but couldn't get the equaliser. Spennymore rode their luck but it's a massive win that puts them up into 8th and this is big news for Tamworth who can potentially win the title on Good Friday if results go their way. Now on to South Shields, whose 3-0 victory over a struggling Banbury side has seen them climb into the playoffs for the first time since December. After the defeat against Brackley, playoffs was looking like a bit of a long shot, but four wins in a row has put them up into sixth. And up next for South Shields is the local derby against Spennymore. Two form teams both looking for playoffs, so that'll be fascinating. As for Banbury, it's nine losses in a row. Manager Kevin Wilson hasn't won a game since coming in, and to make things worse for them, Aidan Elliott Wheeler, who's been one of Banbury's few standout performers this season, Season, has been recalled by his parent club Oxford United and club captain Lawson Darth has left to join Hereford. They sit nine points off safety and relegation is looking very likely now. Now moving on to 12th place Warrington who needed to beat Peterborough Sports to keep themselves alive in the race for playoffs and 51 minutes in Warrington were in charge of this game thanks to a goal from Connor Woods and a very nice left footed finish from the on loan Duba Meze scoring a goal on his first start for the club but despite Warrington's dominance they made life difficult for themselves when Michael Gash was unmarked at the back post to set up a nervy last 20 minutes for Warrington. But thankfully for Warrington, Peterborough didn't offer a lot up front and the game was wrapped up through Matty McDonald to win the game 3-1 and put Warrington just three points out of the playoffs. Now looking at the table after those games, Scunthorpe are 11 points behind Tamworth but the priority has to be finishing second now. Spending more move up into 8th and are only outside the playoffs on goal difference. South Shields win puts them up into 6th and Warrington's win means they are now just 3 points off the playoffs. At the bottom, Banbury looked well down now, 9 points off safety with just 7 games to play. 
Now finally we'll finish up with Friday the 29th of March and I'm recording this about an hour after the games have finished so I've got no highlights to show you but we will go through the results and see how that affects the table. Tamworth could have won the title and they did beat Bishop Stortford 3-0 but they were relying on Scunthorpe losing against Kings Lynn but that game finished 0-0 so whilst they didn't win the title today only one more point is needed for Tamworth. A win for Charlie puts them back up into third place as fourth place Brackley drew 1-1 against Strugglers Gloucester. South Shields ended local rival Spenny Moore's excellent run of form beating them 2-0 this puts Spenny Moore three points off a playoff spot now wins for Boston Alfredson Curzon and Chester keeps the playoff so tight and on the outside you've got Warrington and Hereford both on five points off so whilst it's unlikely they aren't completely out of the race at the bottom Farsley picked up what could be a crucial point they drew 0-0 against Southport and whilst Darlington lost 3-0 to Charlie thankfully for them Rushall also lost to Alfredson so they missed the chance to leapfrog Darlington Banbury's game against Hereford was postponed due to the River Cherwell flooding and Gloucester got a respectable point against Brackley but it seems all too late for them now. So that is the review done with and I'll be back next month to review the final games of the National League North season.